the aspect of time, this notion of time, is one that's not altogether so easy to comprehend. In fact, it's probably one of the most difficult things to comprehend altogether. One can conceptualize that instead of time, it's just events that take place. Time is just something that's to be measured. No different than taking a tape measure when one builds something. It's just a, an abstraction. Different numbers and different types of lengths could have been used. A sixteenth or an eighth or a half inch. These could have been different types of lengths using those descriptions. But at some point, a decision was made to make a half an inch just so long. And so it's the same with time. How was it decided that it's exactly this duration that's a second, or this duration is a minute and an hour and so on? At a certain point, a decision was made. A different choice could have been made in this regard, and it would have changed the numbers involved in terms of those measurements. So it changes the aspect of what time actually is, and it places upon it the idea of it just being a measurement of sorts. And that's just to describe the length of an event. Oh, this event took two minutes to complete, or this game takes three hours, and so on and so forth. It's just an abstraction that could be seen as useful, no different than in music. Measures are used in the same type of measurements, the exact same measurements that are used in building on a tape measure are used in music. You have sixteenths, you have eighths, you have halves, you have holes. So the hole in music would be related to an inch on a tape measure. It's no different. It's just interesting that the same thing that's applied to building using a tape measure has been applied to music. So there's a standard going on it can be seen. Who is the one or which group decided on that standard? And of course, a lot of people will say, well, it's the Freemasons that did it. Well, sure, they could be the ones that we point to. It's the Freemasons. But when you look at the origin of the word Freemason, it goes to two Egyptian root words, free and mason, which means the sons of light, or Saul. They truly believe that they are children of this light source. Well, who's the light? Obviously, the light that they worship is the light of Lucifer, the light bearer. That's in all of their symbols, their symbology, the whole system of it. And they do keep the rest of the public in the dark. That's the point. That's why all their rituals. But it doesn't answer the question, is it them that came up with it, or is it the one that they bow down to that did? What I have called this artificial intelligence, the top of their pyramid symbol, the all-seeing eye of providence. So there's the one, the timekeeper, if I'm allowed to use that term, that decided ultimately these are the measurement points that we will use to keep track of things, to keep track of events and how long they take. Or in terms of building, this will be the exact size of what an inch is. So say one takes their fingers and spreads them out just at a certain distance. Here's an inch. It's exactly this distance between my fingers, just as an example. So something was decided upon that obviously works with certain principles, and it can be seen musically in that way as well. That's the difference between keeping something on track in music and this idea of free time. Anyone who plays music knows what that means. You're not playing music to a click track as an example. So if one plays free time and say records a piece of music in that way, 
and then puts it to a click track, well, it's going to be all over the place. And then say someone is used to recording on a grid to a click track and they're working with a piece of music that's just played in free time, they're probably going to be frustrated. They're going to go, well, this, this is silly. I can't do anything with this. I can't edit it. Because editing, especially in modern music, is all done to a grid. Anyone who has worked with music in that regard realizes this. So the idea of free time, the idea of being free, is disliked very much by all the things of this system that measure everything out, which includes time. And there's a saying, he has too much time on his hands, or she has too much time on her hands. Why do we have too much time on our hands, is the question. Why is that a saying? Obviously, if one looks at their hands, we see that, yeah, there is a signature of time written on them. We do have these tree rings, if you will, that are imprinted on our fingerprints. No different than when one chops down a tree, they can see the concentric circles that indicate the number of years that the tree has been around. And it's obvious that when we look at our fingers, a very similar thing can be seen. So what is measuring that? What, what is the indication on this physical death suit that's indicating this aspect of time and measurements? And of course, time is not infinite either. That's the other thing. There's a limited amount of it. Everything in this system is limited. That's quite obvious. There's nothing unlimited within it. And to defer just for a second, people have asked, what about the animals and how they're affected? Again, I have to reiterate because people are not paying attention. I have to repeat things many times because it's obvious that, again, the filters are so strong, things are just missed. So when the wrong vision was placed on the heart, on the earth, that included everything of the earth, which includes the animals. So the wrong vision is death, which is limited. Everything dies. Thus, everything on the earth, which is now imbued with that wrong vision, dies. That includes all the wrong ideas that go along with it, ideas such as violence. If one wants to understand why animals are violent, and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in their regard as well, it's because they're now imbued with the incorrect vision. The earth, which is the heart, is an entirety. Is this being understood? It's not just us that's been imbued with the wrong vision. It's everything. All the trees, all the flowers, everything eventually dies. It's all been taken over by this wrong vision. Can that be seen? So now this has been several times that I've answered that same question, and still there will be people that ask it in the future. Because they're not truly interested in listening to everything. They think they can grasp everything that's been said just here on this channel by watching one presentation or listening to one of these talks. So much has been presented and that's the problem. So many individuals keep coming back here and stirring the pot in that way. Oh, what about this? That's already been answered. That was answered five years ago. Just as an, an example of just to point out what's being done again and again in that stirring of the pot, just creating confusion. There's no solutions. Every solution under the sun has been presented. As I've said before, lifetimes worth of solutions have been presented. Lifetimes worth. Has one been busy 
getting to any of them, working on oneself, on correcting one's vision in regards to any, any of these actual solutions that have been presented? Or is it just about stirring the pot again? When is he going to present the solution? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. What a farce. What a joke. Anyone asking that question, you're a pot stir. That's all you are. You don't care about the truth. You can't. You cannot be an individual that takes anything serious whatsoever. You're just one that likes to stir shit up just because you're a minion. You have to be. Either that or you're just blatantly ignorant. And that's not an insult. That's just a straight up fact. You're wanting to remain ignorant or you're wanting to be a minion. Or you just straight up are a minion. You just straight up work for evil in the same way that the Freemasons at the highest levels do. That's all there is to it. So to go back to the aspect of time, obviously it is very limited. And there are measurements to it. And that includes this death corpse cancer meat suit that every last one of us is wearing. This rotting shit suit that literally siphons and consumes everything in its path. It constantly has to consume things just to have continuity of existence. That's a fact that can't be debated. Anyone who hasn't eaten for even a single day realizes this. There is nothing of the correct vision in this death suit. It is the mortgage. And that's another point that I'm going to bring up, which I said I was going to bring up a little while ago. How is it proven out in the tells that this is all about death? Let's go back to the word mortgage, which is from two French words, which means death pledge. Pretty much everyone in the research community, quote unquote, knows what mortgage means. But no one truly infers and understands what it really, really means. It is referring ultimately to this death suit monkey meat cancer corpse that every last one of us is wearing. Absolutely every last one of us is inside of the wrong idea, imprisoned by it. Literally in this rotting flesh. It is the mortgage where your time is written on your hands. That's been the sentence that each of us has been given. And no different than in a court system, you're given a sentence with a certain duration of time to serve. And who do we serve? The light bearer. The one that we give our pledge of death to. That's how the reincarnation cycle works. That's the deal that's made on the deck of its ship every single time. We make a pledge to death. We say, yes, death, I accept your deal. Thank you, Santa Claus. I accept all the clauses in your contract of death. Your Christmas gift, if you will. That you allow me into your cyst stem. That I've begged to get out of the lower realm of hell pleading for help because I was lost at sea. I was lost at sea and crying out for help. And your ship was sent as a ship of rescue. And I said, mercy, mercy, or in French, merci, merci. Thank you so much for picking me up. I was lost at sea in the darkness. And your moon ship of death was the rescue and you pulled me onto the deck of your ship to cut a deal with me so that you could toss me into this middle earth ground to be used as one of your slaves to do your bidding for a short time 
before I ultimately and inevitably, once time is up for me, go back into your arms of death to be tossed out at sea again and repeat the whole damn process. That's what this is all about. People think that they're not in a system of hell or hell system. You are dead wrong. Absolutely dead wrong. We are caught inside of the incorrect vision which has rendered us a prisoner indefinitely. Indefinitely. Does one get it? And yeah, as I've said, there is an opportunity coming though. A very narrow, very narrow one. And there are going to be many factors involved in taking on this opportunity, which is the crown of the heart. Many factors. It's not going to be some easy thing, some easy choice even. There's going to be many parameters involved, and many are just going to bow out because these parameters are going to be too difficult, way too difficult. That's just the fact of it. That's the unfortunate fact of it. Which is why I ask, what is one willing to do to get out of hell? What is one willing to go through hell for? These questions I present are not just some vacuous and empty questions. They're not just some tiny little musings of philosophy that I just dabble with. How many don't realize how serious I am? No concept of how serious. So in death system, there are things called mortgages from banks too. That's the other reflection. And this is another tell, it's just so obvious. What is one doing? when building a house they're digging a grave you're digging a grave quite actually and then you make the footing and then you put up the bones called the framing and then there's the wiring which is a reflection of the nervous system and then there's the plumbing which is a reflection of the plumbing inside of this corpse cancer meat suit and then there's all the false lights, the electrical false lights, which is very much a reflection of the bioelectricity and its false lights. And now things are moving towards smart homes, smart technology, and that's ultimately the reflection of the mind itself. Which pretty much the whole world bows down to the mind or talks about some garbage like balancing the mind and the heart. There's no such thing whatsoever in the truth. There's no balance between the mind and the heart. That's the whole war. That's the entirety of the war. Two crowns. And it's ultimately going to be a choice between which one, the mind or the heart. There's no such thing as balance between them. None. Anyone making these proclamations, you're caught in the blindness still. And all of that blindness comes from the mind. It's the one that promulgates the idea of needing balance between itself and the heart. There is no such thing that has never been the message on this channel, on this platform, whatsoever either. Never. The heart, all in. And the mind, get the hell out of here. Get lost. I don't need you in the slightest. I'm done with you. You're an annoyance at best. At best an annoyance. 
and the worst in every other way. So going back to the mortgage, yeah, it's digging a grave. That should be obvious. And of course, the clever minds will say, that's not how every house is built. Look at even things like tree houses. Yeah, keep being clever. That's not the point of the symbol. Look at housing for the most part. For the most part. You're digging a grave. You're getting down to the footing. And so so much concrete is poured. Yeah, part of the whole cementary system. Absolutely it is. And right down to the payments of the mortgage. Constantly paying. Paying this debt. Death. And one pays that mortgage for 25, 30, 50 years. Whatever these mortgages are. And then at the end, you still don't own a damn thing. Just like the reflection of the body, you don't own the body. You're just renting this suit. It's a rental and it needs to be returned. No different than the mortgage, the house, the property. It all gets returned. You die, you lose your little empire. That's a fact that can't be debated by anyone whatsoever in any way in the slightest. It all goes back to the system which gave it to you in the first place, gave you these tepid, ridiculous little opportunities to continue to pay endlessly to it. And so let's say that one even finishes all of their payments after 25 years, as an example. I've done all my payments on my mortgage. Well, guess what? You still don't own it. There's a thing in law called a lodial title, which means allotted by God. And it's said in law that there's no such thing. There's no such thing anymore. Well, there never was in this system. So you get a mortgage which is under fee simple title. Yeah, fee going to the word fio, which means cattle. And that's the tell as well. They're calling you a simple cattle or a stupid piece of cattle or chattel property you're going to come in for your mortgage your pledge to death and literally sign your life away anytime someone signs something for a business that whole little joke is said oh time to sign your life away yeah it's not a joke it's another tell found in the cliches that everyone is telling themselves trying to make it all seem like a light little comedy. Go ahead and sign your life away. Well, that's exactly what everyone's doing. You've already done that. Everyone made the deal with the devil on the devil's ship before they arrived here. And then wait for death, go into death's arms again, and be tossed out at sea once more. Again, crying for help. Send a David, send a David boat. Boat us, boat us. Again, all of these things have been shown in previous works. So many tells, so many indications. People still, you, so many people out there still think this is all a metaphor. That it's not all literal. The pain involved, literal pain. No concept of how serious it is. How damn serious. And because of that, it's just easier to go into a type of denial. Oh no, he, he can't be literal. He, he can't mean that we're literally lost at sea and, and having to go through that. Well, again, go to the construct of sex, as I was saying. All that seed getting spat out, tossed into, yeah, a, a plumbing hole, if you will. That's just the fact. And where is it swimming to? Well, the moon egg. The moon egg that gets dropped each month. Which, for forgive me for being so expletive on the feminine side, but does one wonder why a woman bleeds every month? I mean, it's a slaughterhouse. It's an actual slaughterhouse. And in a slaughterhouse, there's a lot of blood. So since it's a monthly system based on moon, which is also known as sin in many languages, 
Yeah. Yeah, after all the slaughtering gets done, there's a lot of bloodshed. So that's exactly why. And on the masculine or male side, male from the Latin meaning bad, because it's, well, yeah, it's a bad system. It's no good. Yeah, all that seed is, of course, stored in the sun. Does one get it? That's where the recharge happens in the sun, obviously. And then all that seed gets tethered together, ready for the next ejecting, the next orgasmic ejecting. Yay, so fun. So fun for those on this side having that sex. But those those seeds that are tethered together, ooh, yeah, not so much fun. Not so much fun for them at all but hey just go into denial about that it's all good those seeds you just have to conceptualize them as absolutely brand new and they're just blind seed that have never existed ever before and you don't have to really think about where they came from or why that process actually happens and the amount of pain involved in that ejecting while you experience that ultimate pleasure as a man in that ejecting. And just don't think about that. It, it'll, it'll go away. It just disappears. Denial, that's, that's the trick about denial. The truth just completely disappears with denial. It's amazing how that works. Then you don't have to take it serious whatsoever. You just create your own reality, as these New Agers say. You just create it all. Just like you apparently created the whole system and the way it's set up. It's amazing, isn't it, what denial can do. But of course, in actual point of fact, in actual truth, it's death's system. And it has set it up the way that it's set up. And it's anything but nice or pretty because it's a disease. And it's all about pain. That's why it's in the phonetic of paying, pain, constant pain. Just like a mortgage, constantly, constantly pain. And then at the end, do you own it? No, you don't have a lodial title. It's not allotted by God, just as it said. Well, who is it allotted by? Well, the devil. Obviously, the opposite, because it's the dog system. Dog being the opposite spelling of God, for that reason. And anything that's good. It's everything that's evil. Everything that's evil is obviously about pain. So one can go into denial about this just because they happen to have been dealt a slightly better hand in this moment on the devil's ship. They were one of those seeds that actually got picked up by the moon, while the rest got tossed into the slaughterhouse. Hmm. No coincidences. No coincidences. So this cycle keeps continuing over and over and over again because it's the land of the blind. That's what death does. It keeps everyone blind and in the dark, lost at sea, until it wants to use you because you just happen to win the lottery pick of its devil ship scoop that it does as it circles around its abyss, picking up lost souls at random. That's how all of us arrive here, just at random. It's a sick system. It's literally disease. It's the worst. And yeah, it's about constant pain, as has been said, not allotted by God, used as a piece of cattle to be tossed over and over again into its slaughterhouse. But because of New Age style philosophies at this particular tiny little moment in history that's being experienced one can 
manipulate the idea that everything is awesome and everything is just fine. You can pretty much create any philosophy you want at this particular tiny fraction of a moment in history that we are currently experiencing. Well, until time inevitably and ultimately runs out in that regard as well. And tick-tock, the clock is nearing that time, regardless of one's denial and the idea that one can avoid that pain indefinitely. But that's not the truth whatsoever. So, does an individual begin to actually take things seriously? Hmm, is really wondered, or should one just treat it all like a circus joke? And keep being bombarded by all forms of entertainment? During these moments to come, these monumental moments to come, and this opportunity of an eternity that no one can fathom how rare this opportunity is, how impossibly created it is. It isn't being fathomed in the slightest, not in the slightest. And that's very, very unfortunate. But the spirit and the heart is doing its utmost to bring forth the whole message and, and the weight of it that is to come is going to be intense, to say the least. Intense. The weight's being brought right now. They're enough for now but they're not the totality. The weights to come are an enormity. That's what can be said about that. Death is the measure of all things in its system. And time is no different from that. It's a form of measurement. It has a duration, and its time is up. Its time is very, very close to being completely over. It knows it, obviously. This is why all of these things are being allowed. Those who say, if this was all the truth, it wouldn't be allowed to be revealed. One isn't getting it. One isn't listening. This is all about revelation at this time. The whole thing, nothing is going to be hidden at this time. Nothing. We are in that time. And we are very close to the denouement. The final act very, very close. And those who say, oh, I heard this before in two weeks. No, it's not in two weeks. Thankfully, it's not in two weeks. But very close, nonetheless. So again, does one take it serious? I reiterate these questions because they are the most pertinent. They are the most important. Or does one just go into full denial or listen to some other nonsense garbage to just make it all disappear, to wish it all away, that which can't just be wished away? The thresholds have already been crossed. The choices have already been made. The consequences are always rendered about choices in regards to things that have been done. Look at what's been done to the earth. The pains have already been caused. The user is the used. 
We've used the earth and we've used one another through its ugly disease system. And there's a price to pay for that use. A heavy, heavy price. Unfathomable in its implications. Unfathomable. There are a lot of consequences to death. Lots. And denial does nothing against them. Coming up with ridiculous theories does nothing against them. No balance between heart and mind. This is war. As was already stated. And war is raw. Damn right it is. That's enough for today.